Welcome to another episode of Pro Style Podcast, where I had the pleasure of meeting this individual during the broadcast boot camp up in Bowling Green State University. <laughs> and I approached him like, man, you know what? I enjoy watching your game. I enjoy watching you play. I love to get you on the podcast. He said, let's do it. Please welcome my man, Shane Vereen. Shane, how you doing, bro? Hey, I'm doing good, man. Doing good. It's a pleasure to be here. Man, I appreciate you coming on today. So let's get into it. Coming out of high school, yeah, the track star. Now, <laughs> say that they were wow. one of the guys in the state of California. Wow, you did your homework. You did your homework. I did my homework a little bit, man. Tell me a little bit about what inspired your track career. Uh, in all honesty, uh, what inspired my track career was I was I was always trying to get faster for football. And at the time, all the way up until high school, I played baseball uh, in the spring because that's, that's just what I did. And that's the same season as track. However, once I got to high school, I didn't really want to play baseball anymore. And I thought I'd give, I'd give track a shot. Um, I ran one year in like eighth grade with some of my friends and some of them were running in high school. So I said, shoot, let me just run track. Uh, and to be honest, it, I, it was a blessing. I hated every second of practice, not going to lie to you. But the, comp <laughs> but the competition factor, when you line up for the 100, when you line up for the 4x1, four 4x4, four four, I mean, your heart pounding, that adrenaline rush, that there's, there's nothing like it. And I was yeah. blessed to have, have great coaches, too. So. You got to come with it in track. I had the unfortunate of running track in high school, of running the 100 and the 200. Yeah. One kid, everybody talked about, man, this guy's fast. Da, da, da. I said, yeah. if I get a good jump on him, I'm going to win. I got a good jump on him and halfway. Yeah. He just pulled. Huh? Pulled away. <laughs> it was bad. Hey, I but was, look. He was a sophomore. I was a senior. Oh, no. <laughs> you know what? Yep. This yeah. is not for me. This guy is built for this. He won hey. on one state for like three straight years. He's just one of those kids that's really fast. But Got gifted. grew up in a household with a dad that played in the league. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. How was that? How did you learn from him and continue to develop your game? You know, um, the, the funny thing is, he wasn't even the first one to tell me that he played in the NFL. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, he, he never really talked about it unless I was to, me and my brother was to bring it up. Uh, <laughs> I actually learned, I was on my Pop Warner team and one of the dads had recognized the name and then asked me and I said, I, my, no, there's no, my dad didn't play in the NFL. Lo and behold, he did. And and the thing is, after, after I learned he played in the NFL, not much really changed. It's just those values that he was teaching me, he was always teaching me from the beginning, the values that he learned in the NFL about hard work and, and sacrifice was his biggest thing. You're going to have to sacrifice a lot more than your other friends if you want to go where they can't go. Um, and so I think that though that really, really resonates with me still today. Um, a lot of his hard work talk, a lot about if a coach is going to take time to tell you something, you better take the time to at least listen to what he has to say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, th those were things that he was teaching me and my brother before I even knew he was in the league. But once I found that out, I, I was like, oh, I'm playing football. There's <laughs> you can't tell me anything else. I'm doing everything he did. Right. Um, so. So, yeah, he's he's very humble about it. Um, and he you know, he won't talk about it unless unless you bring it up to him. Man, that's that's cool because if my dad would have played in the NFL and I knew it, yeah, I would have found a way to get that jersey, uh -huh. rock it to school probably multiple times a week, yeah. probably like twice yeah. a week. <laughs> if everybody would have known, like, yo, my dad played in the NFL. It's like my daughter right now. When my daughter goes to school, they're like, hey, what do your dad do? You know, what's his career? Because it's like a mystery, right? Because right, yeah. Everybody's like, what do your dad do? And she's like my dad is famous like he played <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome he's telling everybody like nobody i'm like hey don't if anybody asks you just tell them i'm a pe coach or something like that and my daughter's like no I'm, yeah. I'm tell them the truth like they're gonna know like my dad is somebody right somebody yeah. and it's yeah. just always interesting to hear her talk about it and she loves it my son he won't say anything my mm -hmm. daughter yeah she yeah she's she, all about it you gonna let you know. Well, I see right now you sporting that cow, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah, loyal to the soil, baby. What what impacted your decision to go to Cal? I mean, you have USC, UCLA, <laughs> and all these other universities. Uh, to be honest, it wasn't my first choice. Um, but 
what it was is after speaking with my parents, um, I was able, I had, had the ability to go to a lot of schools close to home, um, which I wanted to do, which was important to me because I wanted my parents to be able to see, see me play, not have to fly across the country. Being from Los Angeles, the Bay, the, you know, you have UCLA, you have your SCs, but for me, I wanted to kind of get out of LA. So yes. where can I get out of LA to my, my parents? The most, thing, the, the most important thing to my parents was school and academics. So my mom wanted me to go to Harvard and Stanford. <laughs> and at the time, Stanford wasn't very good, and I'm not going to Harvard. Uh, yeah. They had a 150-pay entry, entry thing, and I was like, no, no, no. So we fell in love with the running back coach. His name was Ron Gould. He was at Cal. I really loved the campus. It was academic. They were really good um, and growing and getting better under Coach Tefford. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it kind of almost made the decision for me. Um, I took one visit and fell in love with it and, and how it was different than any other city I've ever lived in, how, how it was close to home, but not too close to home. Um, and it was, it was just a perfect fit for me. Nice. Well, when you got to Cal, you was there with Javit Best. I had a chance to play against him when he was with the Detroit Lions, and I think he ran like a 44-yard touchdown on us. But <laughs> the burst that he had when he accelerated through the hole was one that I will always remember like high knees perfect yeah. form it wasn't no catching him yeah, it, man because he had a short career he did unfortunately you know if he never would have had the injuries and the concussions that he yeah. had man that i mean there's no telling what, what this dude would have done in the nfl playing with him i mean it was a pleasure it was an honor we came in together uh so he's one of my really good friends i talk to him regularly um and yeah we just the competitiveness that we had to continue to push each other, it wasn't necessarily, I'm trying to take your spot. It's, I'm just trying to make a, a have a better run than you just had. That's you cool. Know? So we're constantly pushing each other. But every time I scored, he was the first one there. Every time he scored, I was the first one there. That's so cool. it was it was like a camaraderie. We knew that that together we, we were much better than if we if we always butted heads and whatnot. And right just use each other to push each other and, and to pick the biggest thing was pick each other up when we were down, you know, you, you know, as any sport goes, you, especially in football during those dog days of camp, right. the middle to end of the season, where you're like, man, I don't want to play anymore. You know, I'm tired. I don't want to go to class though. So that's when I really leaned on him to push me. I'm like, he's still doing it. He's still balling. I got to step up. I got to keep on too. Well, that's super cool because we had a first round draft pick and we had a second round draft pick, same school, same time. Yeah. Tell me about this draft process. Give, give me a draft story. We got the draft Ooh. coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah, man. My, mine was crazy because the team that drafted me to Chicago Bears, I didn't take a visit. Oh, okay. I had no clue that they even knew who I was, you know? Right, right. For me, I mean, when especially when I tell people I was drafted in the second round, that their their first reaction is, "Wow, were you like, was it like the greatest day ever?" Yada yada. And I was like, "No, <laughs> honestly, that whole morning up until the point I got drafted, I was a emotional wreck. Yeah. I was anxious. I was nervous. I didn't eat. I barely spoke to anybody the whole day. I was just in my own head, just thinking." Am I going to get drafted? Okay, if I get drafted, where am I going to go? And right. a lot of it was just, I just want to know. You know, I, I was tired of this waiting game and, you know, all these predictions of where you're going to go, where you're not going to go. You know, they had bat people slated above me that I knew I was better than. Right. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're battling with that the whole time. And then literally I wasn't even thinking about it. I, I had interviewed with the Patriots. They had actually came out to California and worked me out. And it hmm. was like about a two-hour workout. And wow. that's, that's not a lie. Yeah, we went, we went to my old high school. We were in the classroom for about an hour, and we were doing drills for about an hour. But uh, it was a long process, man, and I was tired, but I was so excited. Once it finally happened, I was relieved, and it was like, okay, like the weight was off the shoulders. Uh, but the funny thing was, when you get drafted the second round, now there's a whole other weight that's put on your shoulders. Oh, for sure. So, you know, you got to live up. You got to live up to, to this height. You know what I mean? So – um, but I could handle that a lot better than I handled the whole anxious waiting, trying to figure out what was going to happen. So this is one thing that I've always wanted to ask a guy that actually played in New England. Yeah. How does that playbook look, man? What, <laughs> like, is it, like, is it thick? Is it just very uh, off certain brows? Because yeah. 
Look, I mean, you, you being a dual threat back, you can play in the back, you can go out wide, you're yeah. in the slot. Yeah. I mean, there, there's so many variations to what you can do in your versatility. Tell me about this playbook, man. I just just give me a little bit of what Bill yeah. is going on. You know, there's so I would say there's not one playbook. There, there's what we install during camp and during OTAs, and then there's what we actually run during the games. Gotcha. And rarely do what we run during the game is what's in the install, which gets you ready. It's kind of like the basis, if you know what I'm talking about. Yep. Uh, the basic run plays, and yeah, we go back to that well. But when when you have a quarterback like Tom Brady. You know, he may call two, three, two or three plays in the huddle, mm -hmm. right? We'll call the play and then we'll have, you know, different audibles. And then we get to the line and he changes the whole play completely. Oh, my goodness. So, so it's not necessarily knowing what you're doing that week. Now you got to know everything. So wow. we always said, you know, walk up to the line being prepared for anything. Um, because he's so great, he's going to get us in the right play. He's, he's not going to he's not gonna hand me the ball and run me into a blitzing linebacker for a headache. You know, he, he's very good at what he does. So I think the hardest thing about wasn't necessarily learning the playbook, but learning how to play with 12, you know, learning how to, how to be on his page, see what he sees so you can anticipate the, the, the call change or anticipate an audible or a snap count change, um, because a lot of it is so fast, man. And, but it, I mean, it took, I would say it took me about a, a whole year to really get comfortable, hmm. at least. See, at now, least. It, now it's starting to make sense to me why guys, you know, struggle when they go to that system. We saw Chad Ochocinco or Chad Johnson, he had his difficulties with the system. And when Sorry. you just stated that, that Tom Brady has the ability, first of all, he get two to three plays. I've never heard that a day in my life. I mean, if we were lucky, we would, we would be going to the we would be going to the line with two or three plays. Um, and at the time, you know, when you're first learning it, you think, man, this is crazy. Like, how in the world am I supposed to operate? But once you get it, you're like, I don't want to be, I don't want to play in a system that that doesn't move like this. That we can't change a play that quick. Right. You know, because defense is show blitzes late, you know, and, and you might have a bad play on the defense by have your number. So you got to change to a good play. Nobody wants to get the ball. No running back wants to get the ball with, with a defender two yards in the backfield. There's not, there's not much you can right. do. And just think about the advantage that you have, right? It's like we have two to three plays call, but yet and still my quarterback has the ability to put us in the best situation possible Absolutely. despite what the offensive coordinator call. And that's one thing that you see that, you know, a story that came out within the Packers organization, Aaron Rodgers changing plays, changing routes. Yeah. Tom Brady does this all the time. He yeah. has the ability to do that because obviously he's one of the greatest guys, all one of the greatest players all time, but also the coaches, they trust him. Absolutely. It like they had that in Green Bay because if they did, this story wouldn't be out, you know, nobody would yeah. be talking about it. Yeah, it's super cool because Tom Brady, I trust you, you're gonna yeah. put me yeah. in the right position, you're yeah. not gonna have this stunt hit me right in the mouth as soon as I get the ball. And so, I just, I that was just a question that I always had, you know, yeah. like, no, yeah, Tom Brady's so great. Well, he's great because coaches give him two to three plays, those two to three plays don't look good, he called his own play. Yeah, the, the way he prepares is unmatched. I mean, the way he goes into to every – I mean, I had the ability of watching him – watching him prepare for four years, you know. Right. Watching – trying to figure out what does he see before he changes the call. And now I'm looking at film in that way um, and just getting everybody on the same page because a lot – he's so much – he thinks so much faster and he's a lot smarter and he's seen so many more defenses than right. everybody else in the huddle with him. Uh, and so just the way his brain moves in and how good he is at deciphering what the defense is doing, uh, I mean, there's a, there's a reason why they're, all, they're always in the AFC Championship game. And it's the, the way that that team works. It's the, it's the mindset of 12. It's just it, – it's a culmination of a lot of things, really. Yeah. I mean, it, the guy's going to put you in the best situation possible. It, yeah, and it's a good feeling, man. It's, it's a good feeling. You can play with confidence like that. You can't be mad at that. Like, no matter how many reports come out, Bill and Tom, they're at odds. Tom's going to put him in the best spot. Yeah. And he understands that he know it. But, man, you had the privilege to win the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Tell me about that feeling. How, how was it winning the Super Bowl? 
uh, once, once you win one, that's the feeling you're always chasing. Mm. Uh, just, just the feeling of the game. It's like, it's like you're on a high, you know, for four quarters. I, I mean, after the game was over, I couldn't even, rem I could remember maybe two or three plays that happened because I was just like in it, you know, I was just in it, enthralled in it. And like, you're just, your adrenaline is going and it's a rush that like I've never felt before. And then at the end of the game, you have nothing left in the tank and you're a champion. I'm telling you, man, it's, it's unmatched. It's the best feeling ever. Yeah, man, we lost the NFC championship game to the Packers and they ended up going on and winning it. So it was always tough for me. So I always ask guys that had the ability to win, how does it feel? Everybody's like, hey, after you get that feeling, you just continue to chase it each and every day. <laughs> yeah. Get back there. So that's always cool, man. So you leave the Patriots, you go to the Giants, you leave the Giants, you go to the Saints, you was on yeah. IR. Tell me about tough. this. Man. It, tough. It, tough, man. Um, you know, I've had, I've had a few injuries throughout my career, but, uh, you know, I've always been able to have an injury and then come back, right. uh, you know, being on IR and missing the season, you know, for, for this, that, and other reasons. You know, it's, it's tough, especially when you feel like you can still contribute uh -huh. and whatnot. Um, but at the end of the day, I always told myself, you know, I'm not just football. I'm not just a football player. And yes, I'm like, you're always going to miss the game. I'm always going to miss the game. I'm always going to want to play. And once I, once I was able to settle that down in my mind, I was able to be like, okay, I was a football player. Football will always be a part of me, but now where can I take this now that football is done? Where, where else can I go with this, with this drive, with this competitiveness, with this mentality? What else can I, can I be good at and still somehow stay close to football? And uh, that's why, you know, you saw me at the broadcast boot camp and, yeah. you know, trying to talk about sports since, since I'm not playing anymore. Yeah. So I'm on a pickup court or something like that. But, um, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, 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 uh, I still, you know, same like kind of how my dad was telling me those same values. I'm still using that same competitiveness, that same edge um, now. And uh, it's tough not playing. It's never easy when you've been doing something for eight years to all of a sudden just at the drop of a hat, stop doing exactly. it. Uh, a lot of mental, a lot of mental, you know, stress and stuff going into yeah. that. But you get to a point to where you're like, okay, now what, who else am I? Who, who else can I become? Right. So is it safe to say that we have seen the last of Shane Green <laughs> on a football field? Oh man, I think I think it's safe to say, man. I think it's, it's safe, safe to say. I think it's safe to say. I'm ready. I'm I'm content with it. Um, and more than anything, I'm excited for what the future holds. I'm excited for for new things, new ventures. Uh, yeah. You know, and like I said, I'm always going to be close to the game somewhere or another. I still got so many friends, so many family members that I would literally consider family to me that are still playing. So I still get the, I still get nervous before yeah. their games come on. You know, I, it's like I'm still there, uh, you know, but I'm good. I'm good, man. I'm happy. Hey, man, welcome to retirement. So let's, <laughs> let, let's, let's shift gears a little bit, man, because pro styles look at the symmetry between hip hop and sports. Obviously, you know, it's a, it's a big deal, especially within the NFL. A lot of guys you see hanging out with Drake, 2 Chain, all yeah, those yeah. other rappers. Yeah. What's that one guy that you have to listen to before a game, if there is one? Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. Is there a particular yeah, song? Uh, yeah. Uh, I listen to uh, – it's all the Carter two, pretty much. I pretty much just put the Carter two on. And I, and I just let it go. I mean, the intro – um uh greatest rapper alive i'm a d yep. boy mm -hmm. uh i mean i can probably go down that whole cd and sing every single word uh yep. it's that i say that and then i always gotta i always gotta mix in a little west coast okay uh, i'll go kendrick um i mess around with the west coast i'll go kendrick i might go some cube Mm -hmm. uh snoop is always just has a little bit in there and obviously mm -hmm. california love or two pockets and every place. Yeah, so you, you're right in the midst of everything that's going on, especially West Coast music. You got Cube, you got Kendrick, Recipes yeah. to Nip. Yeah, man. All these guys around you. Yeah. How did that influence your game on the field? Well, I think what it did is just the, the mentality, you know, the, the mentality of, of how rappers and artists explain their hardships and how they got out of those hardships, their, the mentality they had, eat or be eaten. You know, yeah. um, 
I think that that gets you in that mindset. When you step on a football field, you might know you might have five best friends on that other team. But once once that whistle blows, that ball's kicked off, you step on the field, it's it's the opponent. Yeah. You know, it's it's I gotta go get it right now. Yeah. After after the fourth quarter, we could be friends again. But right now, I'm sorry. You yeah. know, it's it's go time. Um, and I think that that is is what really, really motivates guys. And that's what you need. Like, you know, it's that little kick right before the game starts. Um, and, and yeah, and I, I mean, I always have a song in my, I remember for some reason, I always had a song in my head that I would sing <laughs> until I got onto the field. I just be, I would just be saying the words, saying the words. And then as soon as you get on the field and the ball snap, it's like football time, you know, you, yeah. your mind clears and you're just playing. Um, but what I think it was, was, it was just the mentality and, and the words and, and the motivation and how to get out of, you know, a tough situation or how to keep going once you've already been accomplished. Um, I think that's really tough for players once they get that next contract, once they make a name yeah. for themselves, then it's hard for them to find the motivation to keep going. Right. And I think that's music where I really leaned on music to, to keep me going. Gotcha. So if there's one artist that you could choose to say, hey, my game on the field translates to his game in the rap industry. Oh, man. Oh, that's tough. Man, that's tough. <laughs> oh man, let me think. Well, I know I know he's not the popular pick right now, but I've always been a big fan of Kanye West music. Yay. And I was leaving I was right in college, leaving college when graduation came out. Yep. And I was in co- I was right it was right before college when college dropout mm-hmm. and and who was the second one? whatever the second album was but I kind of carried that and so for every reason everything he talked about I just kind of just related to my own life somehow you know you find those yeah. words or those phrases um you know not to, yeah and then my my uh my beautiful my beautiful dark fantasy yeah that was that was yeah man that was meant that was college for me too so I mean those those kind of then Drake uh, Drake is is an obvious choice I mean a lot of things he said when he was getting going, I was getting going as well. Um, I guess so. I guess kind of those kind of those artists who were kind of in the same position artistically and in the same position musically, getting their career going at the same time as I was trying to get my career going. I think I related more to those guys um, than anybody else. You know, not to say I wasn't listening and I don't know all the Jay Z songs. I know every damn Jay Z song, but yeah, <laughs> you know, like the but the guys. Those were the guys that I kind of was relating to you know musically yeah it's funny you mentioned kanye because the 808 and heartbreaks man oh yeah that was yeah man. a lot of people was looking at him you know crazy i was like this is hey I, yeah it took me a couple of listens but then i was like i'm all in <laughs> right right and it. only yeah. yay could pull that off i don't know anybody else could do that and really uh, pull it off and do what he did mm-hmm. hey man I appreciate you for rocking out with me today, man. How can the people follow you on social media, bro? All right, look, you can follow me on Twitter, ShaneVereen34, and you can follow me on Instagram, Shaner34, S-H-A-N-E-R 34 on Instagram, ShaneVereen34 on Twitter. Uh, Let me know. I want to hear everybody's comments. I want to know what you guys thought. Was I lame? Was I cool? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Open up the dialogue, man. Um, And Thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man, that's my man, Shane Vereen. I appreciate you, bro. Welcome to retirement, man. (laughs) Thanks, bro. Thank you. Yes, sir.